Welcome to my guide to the CGP Set B Test 1 Maths Paper. As usual, give yourself 10 minutes to answer the questions on this test. After you've done that, come back, look at the video and see if you got the marks. OK, question 1. Filling the missing number in this calculation. Uh, looking at this question, you should spot that it is a partitioning question. We have 600,909 is the same as 600,000, which we've got here. We've got a 9, so the only bit we've not got in this box is this bit here, which is 900. So if we add these all together, we'll get that number there. So that's your answer there, 900. Number 2, look at these temperatures. Find the difference between the highest and the lowest temperatures. Uh, you should be able to spot that the highest temperature is this one here, 13 degrees. Let's make a note of that here. And the coldest temperature, the lowest, is minus 4. So we have minus 4 over here and 13 over here. So in order to get to 13 from minus 4, imagine this on a timeline. We have to count up 4 to get to 0. Then we're at freezing point, And then another 13. So it's 13 plus 4 which is the difference would be 17 degrees. Number three, the graph shows the conversion rate between rupees and euros. How much is two euros in rupees? So what we need to do is look at the graph, find two euros, it's there, work our way up and have a look how many rupees is that worth? Well, it's slap bang in between 100 and 200. So the number you should know in between 100 and 200 is 150. So that is your answer there, 150 rupees. Dita gives 450 rupees worth of euros to her friend. How many euros is this? Uh, so with this one, we just work backwards. We go to rupees first, find 450, work our way across, stop at that point. You can see it's exactly 6 euros. Number 4, put the decimals on the right in order from smallest to largest. Uh, so the largest is the most obvious one. That's 5.1. All the rest are 4 point something. Uh, so looking at the smallest one, if you look at the tenths column here, that's the one after the decimal point. That's a 7, that's a 7, that's an 8, but that's a 6. So that one's going to be our smallest, 4.68. Probably a good idea to cross these off as you go so you don't miss any out or put any twice. The next biggest one would be 4.7 because that's 4.7 and nothing, whereas this one's 4.7 and a bit extra. So 4.7 is the next one. This would be the next one then, 4.791. And lastly then, 4.86 is our remaining one. And we've got all of them, so we know that that's right. Number five, Louise wants to enlarge the diagram of the room shown below by a scale factor of two. Draw the enlarged diagram on the grid below. All that means is if we're multiplying something by a scale factor of 2 is we are literally just doubling all the sides. We're timesing every side by 2. So if you look at this side on the left, it's 4 at the moment. So if we times that by 2, it's going to be 8 long. Now obviously you're going to use a ruler for this, but because I'm doing this on the computer, I haven't got that possibility. Uh, so I'm going to just do it as best as I can, but bear with me because it may be a little bit more messy than what yours should be. Okay, there you go. That's my example there for you without a ruler. An important thing to note is as I was doing that, all I did was look at each side. So that was 4. I multiplied that by 2, so I went up 8. I did exactly the same with the bottom. That's 4, so I went 8 across. Um, but to work this one out here, this, this long one, what I did was looked across and said, well, what's the distance between this point and this point? Because it looks like a triangle, doesn't it? So that's 2 across. So I doubled that. So I went 4 across. And then the point down was 3, so instead of it being 3, I doubled it, it was 6, so I went up 6 to put my point in there and drew the line between that bit there. Everything else I just doubled, but if you've got a diagonal one, you just have to look at the gaps, the spacing, uh, to work it out. Number 6, Jaden and Louise recorded how many butterflies they each caught. For every 3 butterflies Jaden caught, Louise caught 4 butterflies. Jaden caught 12. How many butterflies did they catch in total? There's a few little points there that could catch you out, so be extra careful with this one. So Jaden caught 12 butterflies. Now it says that for every three that he catches, Louise catches four. So what we need to do is how many threes go into 12? So we know that four times three 
equals 12. So he's got four lots of three. So remember, every time he gets three, Louise gets four. So he's already got four lots of three, so she should have four lots of four. Four times four is 16. So Louise has 16 and Jaden has 12. We need to add them together because it says how much did they catch in total. 12 at 16 is 28. Number seven, look at the diagram of the triangular prism below. Circle the net that matches the prism. Um, for this one, what I recommend you doing is just imagine that you had this piece of card there in front of you and you were going to fold each side and try and make the image there that they've given you. Now, there are obviously some clues. We need a black spot on the triangle, uh, and three out of the four have that. This one doesn't have a black spot on the triangle, so we can completely rule that one out. And the other clue is we have a white circle on one of the sides here. Now, it's not going to be on the base, because the base is underneath the picture. We can't see that. Uh, so this one can be ruled out as well because if you were to fold these up this would be the base so we wouldn't be able to see it so it's not that one and that one as well because that also has, is on the base this is the only one where we have the black spot on the triangle and this clear circle here on a side so this is the only one that works um, so imagine building that up you would find that this one is the correct answer so circle that one Dieter wins 16 tokens at an arcade and trades them all for teddies and dolls. A teddy costs 3 tokens and a doll costs 2 tokens. Write down all the possible pairs of values for T and D, where T is the number of teddies and D is the number of dolls that she trades for. Now a clue here is it says that she trades them all for teddies and dolls. So we can't have any left over. So we need to think in terms of 16 how many threes and twos could we get in as long as we don't have a remainder that would be a correct answer so what we could do is do two teddies uh, two teddies would be six tokens so it would be 2t um, and that would leave us with only 10 tokens left uh, so we'd need five lots of dolls because they cost two so it would be 5d so that's one example now if we were to do three teddies we would have nine tokens 16 take away 9 would be 7. We can't fit 2 into 7 without a remainder, so we can't have 3 teddies. We could potentially do 4. So 4 teddies would be 4 lots of 3, which is 12, left with 4 left. So that would be 2 dolls plus 2 dolls. So that's one example. And it looks like that is going to be the only options we've got. Because if we had 6 teddies, uh, which is the, the only other option, because if we did 5 teddies, we'd end up with 15 tokens, which would leave us with 1 so we would have a remainder. If we had six teddies, that would be six times three tokens, which would be 18 tokens, which is more than what she's got. So those are the only options if she's going to get uh, both teddies and dolls. Now she could just get dolls, um, but it doesn't say that in the question. It says that she gets teddies and dolls. So those are the only two options that will work. If you found that video useful, if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want more SATS help such as this. I really appreciate that and it really does go a long way to supporting my channel. If you want more SATS practice, have a look at my other videos and also have a look in the description of this video where I list a list of helpful books that you can use to improve your SATS knowledge. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.